Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at uh, Russian um, rangefinders. Well, <laughs> I'm not so sure that we are looking at Russian rangefinders. We could be looking at German rangefinders. Um, following the end of the Second World War, as part of the um, repatriations, you know, where the, uh, the sort of conquering side takes and plunders stuff away, um, the contacts factory um, and all its machinery and I think some of its employees were uh, gifted to the Russians in terms of uh, repatriation stuff and they shipped it all off to um, Kiev in the what's now the Ukraine but was part of the Soviet Empire and um, they started making I wouldn't say copies but they started manufacturing uh, the contacts too but labelled it as a Kiev and here we can see two examples of uh, these are both 1970s this is a 1975 version this is wearing a 50mm uh, Jupiter 8M and this is a 1978 version wearing a 35 2.8 Biogon copy lens um, I'm never very sure on the naming of these cameras I think these are for a M's but if I'm wrong please correct me because I get totally confused with the naming of Russian cameras I must admit as you can see they're range finders um, the only difference I think really between them is, is that uh, that's got the 35 on it and it's also wearing a Voigtlander um, Turnit uh, finder this is set to the 35 mil so um, obviously you can use this for composing your shots and this one's wearing the standard um, 50 mil lens very heavy all metal solid construction very wide range finder compared to con uh, not the contacts is to Leica's um, the range finder window is over here and um, there's a lot said about this contacts grip because when you hold the camera your natural instinct is, is to cover this window over um, so you have to learn this sort of rather awkward way of holding the camera so that you don't block the rangefinder window so we'll look at the front we've obviously got PC connection up here this is your uh, your standard viewfinder window that you look through for composing we've got a lens mount which is quite an interesting thing in itself self timer the rangefinder window, the bit that gives you the little square in the middle and this is actually where you focus, you push down as you push down you can see that this lock moves out of the way and then by turning this you can uh, achieve your focus by aligning the, um, the images in the uh, viewfinder um, it does lock at infinity I can find where infinity is on this, I think it's uh, the other way of course it is the other way two different sort of variations of these I think the cleaner looking ones are the ones without the built-in meter which is this part up on the top here there's a much flatter top plane to it uh, this is a selenium cell so no batteries for me to mess about with today uh, you can see the uh, selenium cells it's rather nice uh, little cover that goes over the top to protect the cells. Obviously, it just pops up, but you can get them without the uh, the meter. And the lenses are interchangeable. It's a focal plane shutter, but to change the lens, you will notice you can focus it using this method, which I do find easier. To remove this lens, you'll see that there's this lever here, you simply depress it in and the lens will turn and remove and this is the 50mm lens very small, this is a f2 I believe yeah this is an f2 lens very small but it does recess back into the body a long long way and the advantage of rangefinders together with TLRs is that they don't need this automatic stop down function so the irises on these are a lot easier to, to manufacture there you can see the iris because obviously you're not looking through the lens they're slightly offset again metal, chunky got 
coating on it. Very nice. Back to the camera itself, you'll notice that it's got a rather strange mount in that it's got an internal mount and it's also got an external mount. And if you look at this 35mm lens, you'll notice that this one is attached to the external mount. Only the 50mm go into the uh, the inside mount, all these other lenses go on the outside mount. So yeah, another interesting lens camera combination. We look in here, we should be able to see the curtain, which again is quite different on these cameras. On the bottom, we have these two twisty knob bits, one on one side and one on the other. It's a 35mm camera. We also have the film rewind and we have a uh, tripod brush. And for these, the whole back comes off. See, it's all metal, very nice pressure plate there. I'll turn this one over, get a better view of the shutter and the shutter curtains. It's vertically travelling, there's the viewfinder part there. I think this is an adjustment for the, uh, the viewfinder, for the rangefinder part of it. So there should be a take up spool on there. This, this camera hasn't, doesn't seem to have one. the back of this one, exactly the same. So these are both from the 70s. There we go. This one's got one in there. And this is your take-up spool. Again, the shutter curtain. This is where your fresh film goes. Very, very nice. Very, very heavy. The finder isn't exactly helping it either. So to wind the film on, close that up. <coughs> to wind on the film, this is the wind on lever. So you can turn it like that, you can see the shutter curtain being pulled to the top. Shutter release is this button in the middle. Really, really quiet shutters. As you would expect. The speeds go around this collar here, rather optimistic 1250 is the top speed, but I think it's on the lower speeds that this camera really sort of shines, and uh, you can see there it's set to 100, and, oh, there you can see it's set to 125th, wind on before you change the set of speed, it's always a good, uh, a good habit with Russian cameras, Soviet camera should I say, this one goes all the way down to half a second plus B, so this is a lot slower speed. And wind on. It's almost inaudible. I think it's probably the perfect discrete camera. Amazing. So that's your film advance, film speed selector, shutter release, threaded. Uh, this is your film reminder here which I think is actually itself self resetting. Oh no it's not. It's got a lever here to set it. A lever there. Ah uh, this is the exposure meter scale on the top. First two digits shows the year, so 75. And this is the exposure meter. And it's, again it's winter time and it's not very bright. That's why it's a torch. Demonstrate the exposure meter a bit better. Ooh. So there's the exposure meter. As you bring the light across, it moves. What you're trying to do is just to line it up with uh, that part there. Obviously, you've got minus two stops and minus four stops on these. And you line that up by adjusting this lever here. So you would line this up. Uh, this is in the Russian system, which is ghost or ghost. Um, roughly equivalent to 
ASALI, so but a little bit different. Um, there are conversion charts that you can use. Um, there's no ASA, obviously, because that's an American standard, and there's no DIN because that's a German standard. But yeah, you line this up and then you just read off your uh, your shutter speed and your aperture. So 250 to 5.6, etc. Film rewind does pull up part of the way just to make it a little bit easier. And the bottom film rewind. But yeah, lovely metal cameras. The shutter is the, is the, is the key with these. The shutter is just like silk. Right, I can't put film in that one. That's probably the wrong back for the wrong camera. This one does have trouble with this back. That one. This is the other one. I'll take this turn it off for the moment. This by the way covers um, 35 and 100 mil. It's originally from a Voigtland prominent camera, which is again an interchangeable um, rangefinder, but it uses a leaf shutter, which uh, is a little bit more unusual. The example I've got, the leaf, the leaf shutter is uh, is not working. So it will come in a future video. The focal plane shutters really went out of the day, like her and the horizontal silk cloth shutter one out the day the um, the Voigtland is a beautiful camera and it's beautifully engineered but it's just flawed because of its shutter although the advantage of course is that it will sink to uh, to higher speeds just drag the film across nice and steady put that back back on Not a lot of foam on these, it relies on the metal because obviously it's a design from before the war even I think. And this back is not particularly brilliant either. That's a bit floppy. And then yeah, you can just uh, wind on, as you know I like to take up the slack. Probably going to wind it off the take up spool then. Might be no batteries, but I can still mess it up. Oh, that's pretty tight now. There we go, it's turning. So now the film's being advanced. And we reset the frame counter to zero. Don't leave your cameras cocked. These are mechanical, it's all springs and gears and there's no electronics apart from very, very simple electronics in the meter. Um, there's a number of lenses for these. There's a 35, I think there's a 28, and I think there's an 80, or an 85, and there's also a 135. And you'll see the more common turret sort of finder that sits on the top that covers all of them. Those are made in, uh, in Ukraine as well. They quite often come up for sale. But... I happen to have this uh, this Voigtlander one kicking about. Um, very simple to use. You just pull it out, and as the name implies, you just turn it. That's it set up with a hundred mil lens. Turn it back the other way, and that's it set up with a thirty five mil lens. There's also a little bit of uh, parallax correction built into it as well. But yeah, it's a nice. Uh, Nice addition. And I'm just using that one because it's one I've got. I haven't got one of the, the, the turreted Soviet ones. But yeah, that's the 35mm 2.8. Again, there's not an awful lot on the outside of the lens. But if you use zone focusing, and uh, this is where your uh, your aperture and your depth of field, this is a Jupiter 12, by the way, 35 2.8. Um, and to set the iris on this, you actually turn this inner, oops, this inner ring, and the iris is set against this mark inside the lens rather unusually. 
And like I said, because it's a rangefinder, you don't have all that auto stop down mechanism that you have on SLRs. The only disadvantage is that you can take film or take pictures with the um, lens cap on because you're not actually looking through the lens. So there we have it folks, this is the, the Kiev, I think it's the 4AM these versions, I think the 4A is the one without the metering on the top. Like I say let me know if I've got that wrong, I'm no expert on these uh, Soviet era cameras, we also got a Zorki and a Fed to come as well at some point. Um, to mount a lens you just red to red, and then turn to it clicks. And that's your, your lens mounted. There we go. That goes down. Like so. So there we have it folks. A pair of um, Soviet cameras that aren't really Soviet cameras because they were made with the same equipment that uh, the good folks of contacts used or Zeiss used to, uh, to make the contacts tubes. And these were made on the same machines, the same designs. Um, not really reverse engineered. They're not copies of something. They are re I don't know what you call it really. They're made using the original equipment and the original drawings, but these are branded as Kiev's. Just a quick reminder if you haven't as yet entered the, uh, the 100 subscriber giveaway, that's closing um, this coming Sunday, so that's in uh, two days' time. Um, all you've got to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on the uh, on the appropriate video announcing it and uh, the draw is going to be on Monday. Good luck to everybody. There's uh, been a lot of comments this week, which is uh, nice to see. And um, yeah, if you haven't entered yet and you want a chance to win 10 rolls of uh, HP 5 Plus, um, just toddle along to the other video, leave a comment, subscribe. And I've got to put this on the end of the video, so all of them now is like comment, subscribe, questions, queries, etc. down below. Subscription's optional, obviously, but uh, if you enjoy this sort of stuff, these sort of old cameras. Although we are getting to the stage now where I'm starting to move into the 80s, so we're going to start seeing more ugly plastic cameras coming along. I much prefer these sort of metal things that just keep working. And these are beautiful machines. Hope you enjoyed this one and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.